everybody. At a recent staff meeting, we were discussing ways to solicit feedback from our patrons in order to improve library programming. One of the ideas mentioned was to send out emails or mail letters to patrons who have participated in our programs in the past. While discussing that idea, some of you mentioned that the strategy seemed like a lot of work, which is why I've decided to put together this presentation explaining how to create form letters using Microsoft Word. There are many reasons you might need to create a form letter. To solicit feedback from participants of library programming, to invite groups to functions, to notify past donors of future fundraising events, or really any time you want to reach a group of people with a message. In this presentation, we are going to learn how to create a form letter. You can also use this function to create form emails. The process is basically the same. We will be using a template that comes installed with your copy of Word and a table of recipients that I created using a table in Excel. Let's get started. First, I'm going to start a new blank document. On the Mailings tab, I'm going to choose Start Mail Merge. From the menu that pops up, I'm going to select Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard. It's the last option on the menu. The Mail Merge Wizard pops up here on the right side of your document. We're creating a form letter, so we're going to leave Letters selected. At the bottom of the Wizard menu, we're going to choose Next to start creating our document. The wizard asks how we'd like to set up our letter. We're going to use one of Word's templates to create our letter. When we click on Start from a Template, the option to Select Template appears. Click Select Template and then select the tab labeled Letters. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the Urban template. We now see what our form letter is going to look like, minus all the important details. Now it's time to start customizing this template. First, we're going to add recipients. They give us different options for adding recipients. We could add recipients from our Outlook contacts, type a new list of recipients into the wizard, or we can pick an existing list. The existing list could come from Excel, an Access Database, a Word table, different places. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've created a list of tip recipients as a table in Excel. You'll remember from our previous tutorial on querying Excel tables using AutoFilter how to create a table in Excel. You can choose whatever fields you like for your table. We'll see in a minute how Word recognizes the field names I've chosen and fits them into the template. So we're going to choose Use an Existing List select Browse, and then I'm going to find that Excel document I've already created on my computer. I found my Excel table called Volunteers, and now I'm going to open it. Word asks me where to look for the table. I only have one table on the document. It's on the first sheet. So I'm just going to make sure the first sheet is selected and click OK. As you can see, Word has located the records of the recipients I entered into the Excel table. If there are any recipients on the list I would like to exclude from this mailing, I can deselect them now. Now that we've selected the recipients we want to send our letter to, we choose Next, Write Your Letter from the Mail Merge Wizard menu. Now we need to fill in our information and tell Word where to find our recipient's information and where to place it in the document. Let's start at the top of the document with the sender's information. When I click on the lines at the top of the document that hold the sender information, they change to text boxes where I can enter in my information. I'll do that now. Now 
Now we need to enter the recipient information. We don't want to type out the information for each recipient, so instead we need to tell Word where to look for the information we want in the Excel table we linked to our form letter. So click on the text that says, Type the recipient address, but instead of typing in the information, delete the text and go to the Mail Merge Wizard menu and click on Address Block. Once we choose Address Block, Word gives us different options for displaying our recipient's addresses. We can see that Word was able to match up the fields I created with the address fields in their template. If that were not the case and the information wasn't displaying correctly, we would choose Match Fields to tell Word which of our fields contain the information they're looking for. I can scroll through my list of recipients and see that everything looks just how I want it to. So I click OK. You'll notice that the template's text box has been replaced with a placeholder called Address Block that will display our different recipients' information on each letter. The next text box tells us to type the recipient name. Our recipients' names are displayed along with our addresses, so we're just going to delete that text box. We can either delete all the text in the box or simply right click on the text box and choose Cut. Next, we need to pick the date for our letter. When we click on the text box for the date, a calendar display lets us choose the date we want for our letter. Now we're going to add a salutation. Again, we want our salutation to be created dynamically for each recipient, so we're going to tell Word where to find the information for the greeting line. Delete the text box for the salutation and go to the Mail Merge Wizard menu to select Greeting Line. There are different options for formatting a greeting line that we can play around with, but I like the default option that's already selected, so I'll leave that as is. Notice we can also choose a salutation for any records which have an address but no name. They also give us an example of what the format we've chosen looks like with a recipient from our table. Again, if the information isn't displaying correctly, we have the option to match fields and tell Word where to find the information that they want. The salutation line is now filled with a pl placeholder called greeting line. We're going to choose a closing now. I'm going to go with Sincerely. And they've already filled in my information, my name and the name of our library. This is also the point where we would type in our letter. I've already written a letter for this tutorial, so I'm going to go and open that letter now. Now that we have all the information we want filled in, we're going to preview our letters. As you can see, Word shows us what our letters look like when it's filled in with our recipient's information. We can browse through all of our recipients by clicking the arrows in the Mail Merge Wizard menu. If we need to make any changes, we can either edit our recipient list or exclude any recipients we didn't intend to include in this mailing. If all of our information is correct, we're ready to complete the merge. At this point, we can edit individual letters if we want some of them to display slightly different information. Let's say, if we wanted to notify the volunteers who have reached a milestone year that they'll be receiving an award at the luncheon. I don't need to edit any of the letters, so the last thing I need to do is print all of the letters that I've generated. That's it! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you find many uses for this time-saving feature.